Okay, so it's a little after 8 a.m. and uh, we don't have to get nearly as uh, early start as yesterday. Uh, we just finished up breakfast and I think we put down 42 nautical miles yesterday. So it was a really good day and it was a long one. Uh, we only have about 30 more to go today, so uh, uh, much shorter, And uh, but we do have to cross the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Got the sails up out here in the Strait of Rosario. And I haven't seen uh, that worried look on Tanya's face in a while. We, uh, we're getting some pretty big gusts. But we're gonna be all right. Got the head sail furled in a little bit, running full main. And the wind's projected to die off on us, so should be okay for now. But if it gets worse, maybe we'll consider resetting things. Put in a reef. Let's see how well this works here. 30 degrees more. And go ahead, Tanya, lower down. Tank's pulling in the reef line. Okay, that, yep, you're good, Tanya. Okay, ankle bottom that out. We're getting whipped around here. Okay, we're going okay. this tack here. Alright, don't Uh oh, we're gonna jibe. That's okay. Hang on, maybe not. We're we gonna heave two. I think we're heave two. Okay. Can you pull your uh, your other jib line here? Come back around. I got the sail kind of working on this side. Break that in a little yeah, bit. Bring it in. Get another wrap. Get another wrap, babe. There you go. And then we'll just tack it back. Yep. Put a locker in and give her. So we're still moving. We got one 1.6 knots. We're not we're not in irons. We can trim that. We'll get a little bit of speed. All right. 
so we came back through we got on our earlier tack got the reef in and we're moving back at 5.2 knots at a much comfortable much more comfortable heel so the water is getting bigger out here and the waves are getting rolly but I think we got everything under control yeah, so you can see how much thicker the waves are yeah they're just wider right mm -hmm. So we just pulled in and we're tied up here to the work float. This is also where they haul out some boats here at uh, Port Townsend. And uh, this is where the inspection is going to take place tomorrow. Uh, all the onlookers, they'll be able to stand up here and get a good view. Uh, hopefully hear everything that the uh, inspector is going to announce and, and describe. So uh, now I think it's time to go crack a cold one and relax. It was uh, quite the ride today. So it's going to be tied up here in Port Townsend. Here we are, we're starting the morning off with uh, a tour of Port Townsend rigging. And I'm here with some of the coho group, so we're meeting a lot of these guys for the first time. And uh, we're going to get a tour of the shop here, and I think after that we're going to head on over to the boat. And uh, they're going to pick our rigging apart, so I hope everything goes well today. But uh, let's get on in here and check things out. So we wrapped up the walkthrough here at Fort Townsend Rigging and now it's time to uh, face the music and uh, go over to our boat and start the inspection. So, alright, here we go. Thoughts on those two? So Maybe what are you looking for? I mean, that's too. one thing that I just kind of I always wonder. Uh, calibrated, you know, yeah. elbow or something. I like the tension of the head sail. I do. That's pretty good. It's like it's total feel. judgment, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, you kind of got to go sailing to really see it. But like maybe like six inches of sag. Static. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Probably about that. Yeah. And it'd be roughly the same under sail. The weight of the sail and the extrusions pulling it down, letting it flop more. With a staysail rig, it's hard to get 
the right tension for both these sails flying at the same time, so you kind of got to like, prioritize one or the other. And I like to prioritize this one. So this is the one that needs to be tight when you're sailing the breeze. So ideally this one is tighter. If you're sailing in mostly lighter conditions and you're less likely to use the staysail, then having a little bit more tension in your head sail is nice. But again, we're going, planning for offshore. It's nice to keep this one nice and snug. So we'll get on boats, we'll do the quick and dirty gravity inspection for tension. Uh, first glance, I like the tension of these. They're nice and snug. It's all a matter of how the mass responds to it. As the inspection went on, it quickly became evident that this was less of an inspection and more of a demo on how Port Townsend Rigging likes to perform their rigging inspections. Now I'm not saying he wasn't inspecting the boat. He was, and we're all learning something from it as well. So, tight, and click. Oh, that one. Mm -hmm. Balls are sticking just a little bit in there, so that would be a good one to pop apart and clean and inspect. This could be because our rigging is new, and maybe he realized that it didn't need such a close eye inspection. However, he did find items that needed tweaked, tuned, or rebedded. He's going to be totally happy. When it's trapped inside the deck, that's the spot that we're concerned with. Yeah. Did you replace all the hogs recently? Pretty much all the lines have been replaced. Yep. Oh. Yeah. They look pretty good. They're all in good shape. Usually my test is if I can do that and it grapples at me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not good. He did provide great insight to areas of concern, such as taped items that may hold in salt water or bearings that should regularly be rinsed with fresh water. In conclusion, Stellajay's rigging is in prime order and ready for offshore use. There were no catastrophic failures, and all in all, we were very proud to show her off. All right, well, we just finished up the inspection here, and I think Stella J actually passed uh, with flying colors. Of course, there's a few things that we can touch up and make improvements on, but that's what we're here for. So it was really good news. I think everybody, uh, you know, got to learn something out of this and uh, walk away that much smarter. So uh, I think uh, now it's all uh, time to go get a drink and some lunch and uh, move on to the next thing. So. Okay, so today's event, we're here, here at uh, Carol Hasse's sail loft, and so we're going to go inside and get a tour. So here we go. is one, two, three, four, five, six layers, right? So that's six separate pieces on the plotter cutter. And so a mainsail has seven patches, okay? So the main head tack and clue, first reef tack and clue, and second reef tack and clue. So all those, so seven times at least six, depends on the side of the size of the sail and what size, um, 
what size super ring hydraulically pressed bowl we put in determines the number of patches so you know when we're designing the sale all this is kind of figured out right safe working load size of hardware and then layers of patches and layer number of everything our tour guide wasted no time getting down to business and her passion for sail making was extremely evident we were given full run of the sail loft along with more sail making information than i could handle the art of sail making was more fascinating than I had imagined, but make no mistake, this is a very demanding job, and there was about a week of hand sewing needed for each sail. So, kind of behind most of you is our plotter cutter. So right at your knee level there, that's how our fabric comes on these big rolls. It comes on a truck, on pallets, and we carry them up those stairs, the motors, um, and um, it gets rolled out on this table that's hooked up to a compressor. Um, if you do want to look close, you'll see like a one inch grid of mm -hmm. holes. It's also very cut up because it is a blade that runs down and cuts. Um, so it's hooked up to a compressor that then sucks the fabric down to the table. You know, push pins, again, we're doing, especially if you get a, a big thank you to the Carol Hassey sales really group. Really thank you to Port Townsend Rigging. And thank you to the Coho Group. This was not only a great learning experience in general, but now we are ready more than ever to tackle the trip south, destination Mexico.